Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Providence Church Online. We're so excited to be with you today. We have our worship team ready to do one song, and then Pastor Sheridan is going to come out and give a 15-minute message. So grab your blanket, grab a cup of coffee, tag some friends to join us today, and get ready for an awesome Sunday. Hey, well, good morning, Providence Church. Pastor Sheridan here. I'm at District Church. So today's message will be broadcasted from there. I just want to give a special shout out to Pastor CJ for allowing us to use this incredible facility um, as we give God's word. Um, so can I just pray for us this morning? Father God, I just ask that the words that come out of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord. That all of, of the words that come out of my mouth would be the message that you've placed on my heart, the message that you want to declare to God's people in this time of crisis and confusion, that people are encouraged today. In your precious name of Jesus, amen. Well, church, all week there's been a message on my heart and right before uh, we got here driving up to El Dorado Hills, I looked at Marissa and I said, okay, the message that I've been preparing, I feel like the Lord, the Holy Spirit just dropped a whole different message on my heart. So you have to be praying that it comes out okay. Um, I just really want to share with you something that I've been meditating on. So turn with me as you're in your homes today with your families to Mark chapter 5, starting at Verse 21, and it says, When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. 
Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman who was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. My message for you today is simple, but I believe very powerful and impactful to you. I know that this crisis that's hitting our nation, our communities, our homes, is having an incredible impact on many of you in terms of your suffering, in terms of anxiety, in terms of economic strife. And I just want to encourage you today by talking about faith. See, what I love about this story is that Jesus is going on, this, on all these missions of healing. And this woman who has had an issue of blood for 12 years convinces herself, if I can just even touch the tag on Jesus' shirt, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I can be healed. Can you guys imagine for 12 years, for 12 years having a condition, having an issue with blood? See, in this time, based on Levitical mandates, right, the Jewish people would have understood that this woman would be considered unclean because of this issue with blood. So everything that she touched would now be considered unclean if she touched it. So in many ways, when you do research, this woman most likely was quarantined or isolated because of her condition. And she had gone to doctors and all these other people, and then she sees Jesus coming along the way. And because of an act of faith and desperation, she does what? She army crawls just to try to touch Jesus. And then he asked the question, who touched me? Why? Because he felt power come out of him. Friends, I know for many of you, you're discouraged right now. I know for many of you, you're asking yourself and you're asking each other and you're asking the Lord, what is happening? Is there any hope available right now? Lord, I trust you, but I have to be completely honest. I'm not seeing you in the midst of this. Friends, my encouragement for you today is that the heart of Jesus always responds to a heart of desperation. He always responds to it. He always responds to a heart of desperation. That's why Jesus took the time to look around in the midst of the crowd of the different people touching him. He needed to know the person who had the level of faith in desperation and belief that through Jesus, that she could be healed. I truly believe that right now in the midst of this crisis, it's an opportunity for our faith to be battle tested. When we look at James chapter one, verse two, it says that when we face so many issues in life, to consider it pure joy, when we face trials of many kind, because our faith is being tested. 
And that faith being tested produces perseverance. And then even in Romans chapter 5, verse 3, it's kind of this chain link reaction. It talks about when you're enduring sufferings, it produces endurance and perseverance. That perseverance produces character. That character produces a hope that will not disappoint. So we consider our suffering something to delight in. We consider even when we feel desperate in our trials and our suffering, that right now is an opportunity for our faith to be tested. What is our faith? And why is this important? It's our confidence. It's our assurance. A faith test, think of it like a school test. When you're in school, right, math was incredibly difficult for me. When you sit down at your desk to take the school math test, what is happening? Well, that test is evaluating you based on the questions on the sheets of paper and your answers to those questions. You will receive a score. And based on that score, that score will give an account of the knowledge of the subject that you have in your head. And in the same way, a faith test in the midst of our suffering and in the midst of our suffering gives an account of the faith that is in our hearts. That's what it does. It, it, it pretty much gives us an opportunity to see the faith that is there. Right? When we look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, it talks about comparing in the midst of suffering and trials, just like gold is purified by being refined through fire, in the same way our faith is proved genuine in the midst of our suffering. We see what's there. We get an account of what is in us. And in the same way that this woman was isolated and quarantined, I know for many of us, We've been in our homes. Do you realize that in the midst of this difficult time, I truly believe that the Lord wants to be operational and surgically go into our hearts and quarantine that virus or that part of ourself that he's been trying to work on for a very long time, for a very long time. That virus that may be lust, that virus that may be pride, that virus that may be a lack of faith that we have in him, a lack of trust that we have in the Lord. And he wants to isolate it and take care of it and remove it. He wants to make you well. Will you reach out to him? And I I, I truly believe that in the midst of this crisis, a few things happen. It brings out the best in us, it brings out the worst in us, and it brings out the parts of us where Christ is lacking in us, friends. I truly believe that we can have a powerful encounter with God. When when I meet people who are on fire for the Lord, they're on fire for God. Why? Because they've allowed their faith to be refined by the fire of suffering and crisis. We have to start asking ourselves the real question in the midst of this test. Do I trust in the kingdom of God and what God is doing? Or do I trust in the kingdom of Costco and my own self-sufficiency and what I can be doing? Do I honestly believe that you are faithful, Lord? Because we see, to go back to Romans chapter 5, We see, right, that as faith is tested, it produces perseverance. The people who are on fire for God are the ones who, even in the midst of their trials and circumstances, they've seen God's faithfulness over and over and over. And what does that do? It produces character. What is character? Character is what your life is when you're not in character. It's when you're on the freeway and someone swerves right in front of you. Whoever you are in that moment, that's character, right? It's whoever you are when you don't have time to get polished up and and project the self that you want people to know. That's your character. I truly believe that bad times produces good character, as we see in Romans chapter 5, right? And then from perseverance into character. Here's another amazing opportunity when our faith is battle tested. It says that character moves into a hope that does not disappoint because of the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. 
And then it goes on to say in verse 8 that God demonstrates his love for us because of this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we see once again that our hope will not disappoint because of the person we're putting our hope in, who is Christ Jesus, who loves you, who likes you, who favors you, and who is for you. Friends, a lasting or the closing thought that I have for you today is as our faiths are being battle-tested right now, allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what really is there. Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you maybe what needs to be pruned or operated on or changed. And my friends who are discouraged, Remember this, this guy named Dallas Willard has this amazing quote. If you want to know God's address, it's at the end of your rope. I know many of you feel like you're hitting rock bottom. Well, here's the beautiful thing about com being completely discouraged and hitting our rock bottom. is when we hit rock bottom, we're already building upon a more sturdy foundation than the one we had before. Why? Because just like the woman who's, who's, who's reaching out in faith and trusting the Lord to heal her, we can reach out but now truly believe that Jesus is who he says he is and that we can come to him when we're wary, that he has been given authority and that he loves us and has the best for us. When we're on our knees in worship, when we fall down to the floor and surrender our hearts and our lives, it gives us an opportunity to bow down and worship God. But we also, we're closer to the floor. And so we're closer to being able to inspect the floor or the foundation that we've actually built our life upon. And friends, if you find out my foundation is actually not built on how much I believe that God is faithful, don't just wallow in shame about it. Talk to the Lord about it and show him, Lord, help my unbelief. Tell him, Lord, I'm lacking in faith. Will you give me more faith? Will you restore my trust in you? Friends, be encouraged today. Let me pray for you. Father God, we love you and we thank you. And I ask that all of the words that came out of my mouth today would be encouraging for your people, that we would come together and bow down and worship you of you, but also assessing maybe some of, some of the foundational principles that we've built in our life that are not built upon you, our cornerstone, our cornerstone, Lord. I ask, Lord Jesus, that where there is a heart of desperation, that they would know that if they were to reach out in faith to you, that you are there, available, and helpful to them in this time. God bless you, Providence Church. We're gonna get ready to receive our tithe and offering. And I know at this time, it's been challenging for all of us, challenging physically, mentally, financially, and for some of us spiritually, but we're all in this together. I personally am not working right now. I'm a supervisor at Starbucks and my cafe store is closed due to not making enough money to stay open. As a church, we operate solely on people's love and giving to us. And right now the church is needed more than ever. So this morning, I wanna challenge you. I know there's no offering buckets being passed around, and it's on us now. It's on you and it's on me. So please give online at provsac.org. If you go to the website, there is a giving tab on the top right-hand corner of the website. If there is anything we can do for you and your family, please reach out. Please email us, reach out to us on social media. And remember, we're all in this together. We're praying for you and we love you guys.